you know, the Chinese New Year is known as the Lunar New Year, the Spring Festival, and it really is the most important holiday throughout, you know, East Asia and Southeast Asia. Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. You know, anyone that's living and working in Asia or works with Asia or is buying products from Asia will very quickly learn about a very important holiday that is known as the Chinese New Year. In China, they may also call it the Lunar New Year or the Spring Festival. In Vietnam, they call it Tet. Essentially, it is the same holiday. And you might ask yourself, well, when is the Chinese New Year and why is this Chinese New Year so important? For anyone that's in manufacturing, you will soon learn that for some factories, they may close down for a month or even longer. And, you know, countries will just completely close down. You will not be able to get anything in and out of customs at all. In fact, the customs is closed. So you might ask, well, what is this really important holiday when everybody's starting to go crazy? And so, you know, the Lunar New Year holiday actually changes every year, which is also really confusing for many of us in the West. You know, we have Christmas and Christmas falls on the 25th of every December. We have the, you know, in America, we have the 4th of July. It's on the 4th of July every year. But this Chinese New Year changes every year. Some years it's early, some years it's late. So some years, you know, the factories are closing up, you know, way at the beginning of January. And other times they might be closing at the end of January. Well, Chinese New Year changes because the Chinese New Year follows what's known as the Chinese Lunar Solar Calendar, which is basically, it's a calendar that is based upon the lunar and solar cycles. So it's a totally different calendar than our calendar. And it really is the calendar which will determine what the Chinese New Year will be. So every year it changes. For example, in 2023, it will you know, be on January 22nd, but then next year, 2024, it will be on February 10th. In 2025, it'll be on January 29th. And you know, each year too, there's a different animal associated with it. So you know, in 2023 is the year of the rabbit. And in 2024 is the dragon. And in 2025 is the snake and so forth. So it goes through every one of these zodiac animals. So every year it will change anywhere between, you know, uh, mid-January to, you know, about mid-February will be the time that there will be the Chinese New Year celebrated. You know, the Chinese New Year is known as the Lunar New Year, the Spring Festival. And it really is the most important holiday throughout you know, East Asia and Southeast Asia. So you might ask, well, why is there even this New Year holiday? What's it all about? And actually, like so many things in Asia, and particularly in China, there is a legend associated with the New Year holiday. And the history of the Chinese New Year holiday actually dates back a thousand years, when the um, ancient civilizations believed that beasts ruled over nature and humans. And the Chinese believed in order to appease a mythical creature, they would hold an annual feast, during which time they would then give offerings. So the Chinese believed that they would give offerings for their families, for their ancestors to protect them from harm. And the Chinese New Year has a legend of a beast known as Nian. And according to the legend, every year, the night before the New Year, this monster, this beast named Nian, came out of a hiding place to terrorize villagers and their livestock until they paid tribute to the beast Nian. You know, so they began to, villagers began to realize, well, huh, it's the new year. This beast Nian's going to come out. And so the villagers started to devise a plan that they would hang red lanterns, light firecrackers, and that this would help scare off the beast because they knew that the beast Nian did not like the red color or loud noises. So this, to their surprise, this worked. And suddenly they realized that the beast in the end didn't come anymore. So this began to spread. And eventually every New Year's, they would have red decorations. They'd light firecrackers and have loud noises to ward off the evil spirits, which would then bring them good luck for the new year. You know, as time practiced, the legend has it that this is, became known to be celebrated as what we know today to be the Chinese New Year. 
The Chinese New Year today is a 15-day celebration that is filled with traditional customs and has really become deeply rooted in the traditional holidays throughout a lot of Asia. Now, not all Asia necessarily has 15 holidays. Um, China, Vietnam, and some other places have you know, quite a few holidays. But um, some of the other countries may have a few days holiday, three days holiday, four days holiday. It really depends upon the country itself. But what remains the same is that each country has has this holiday is steeped in a lot of traditions. For example, I know like in Vietnam, there's certain days where you go visit the oldest person in the family. There are certain days when you, um, you know, where friends can visit. There are certain days where friends should not visit. There's, you know, all these different, you know, days of the, the new year where you should or should not do things. There are, you know, days where nobody should visit. And that's why if you're ever in, um, you know, a place like Hanoi during the Chinese New Year, which I have been, you know, there there can be like, you know, days when the streets are just completely empty. It's eerie. It's like, it's like the city is a ghost town because everybody's in their houses because you're not supposed to go outside or go visit people or go do anything those days. You know, so, you know, not only is the Chinese New Year, you know, an important holiday, it's also a holiday which is really, really steeped in a lot of different traditions. And one of the things that it has is it has the zodiac animals. And, you know, this year in, in 2023 is going to be the rabbit. And so, you know, each one of these different animals or these different zodiacs have, you know, different meanings to them. You know, some years might be more lucky if you're born in one year. Maybe, you know, this year will be a better year for you, um, you know, because, you know, Chinese also believe that these different animals get along. And they might even look at this, some of the people for marriage. They might say, like, if you're, a, you know, you're, you're a tiger and you're a, you know, rabbit, maybe they don't get along and they shouldn't marry or, or th something like that. It can be really... You know, so some people really, really dwell deep into this. They'll even, you know, they'll even consult this and decide which year is the best year to get married. What's the best year to have a child? You know, some people really, really look at this and then will d decide. So, you know, those born in the year of the rabbit, if you're if you're going to have a baby this year, if you were born in the year of the rabbit, are considered quiet, elegant, and kind, while at the same time responsible. So your lucky number would be three, four, six. Your lucky color is red, pink, purple, blue. Your lucky flower is a lily and jasmine. And your lucky direction is east, south, and northwest. So those would be for those that are born in the rabbit or for the year of the rabbit. So each one of these different animals sort of have different qualities to them, have different lucky numbers, have different directions, have different colors that are all lucky. So... Each year could bring different types of luck or different type of things to the Chinese um, New Year itself. You know, so the Chinese New Year is actually a very, very important New Year. And, you know, I know that if you are working in the global supply chain, it can be difficult because, you know, if you don't get things shipped out before the New Year, then, you know, it's probably not going to happen right after the New Year. And it may not happen until March. So suddenly, you know, where you place an order in December and you're not getting a shipment until March or getting a shipment until April. And that can really be frustrating, especially when you're looking at your global supply chain. So anyone that is working or dealing with Asia in the global supply chain needs to understand the Chinese New Year and why this is such an important time for the Asians themselves and also that it is going to disrupt your supply chain. So you need to just understand that this is going to happen during this time. And it's even like if the production was finished during the New Year, you could not even get it out because the customs is closed. So there's no containers or no container ships going in and out of Asia. That is how it can affect your global supply chain. This is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. We hope you've enjoyed this. We'd like to wish you all a very happy Chinese New Year and have, wish you a very happy Year of the Rabbit. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate you. Thank you for um, our team, um, especially Rico, for helping put this together. And thank you for our audience. If you'd like to read more about the Chinese New Year, you can read our blog on When is the Chinese New Year. We'll put a link in our description. Thank you so much.